Oh, fantastic. All right. Uh, very excited to give this talk. I'm going to just, uh, just some context about me. I'm a pollster. We do a lot of polling. Uh, we do, you know, he said trillions, but our actual numbers, we do about three million interviews a month, uh, which is a lot. And we're going to just talk a little bit about climate as an issue. So first, uh, this is a big table of numbers, uh, but the basic idea is, is that the way that, we, um, the way that we measure what's important and what's not is that we show people two random issues, and then we just say which of these two things is more important you know, to the issues facing the country. And so what this shows is basically the percentage of the time that people pick that versus another issue at random. And so what you could see is that right now, the top issues uh, are cost of living, inflation, the economy, the deficit, Healthcare, luckily, that's like a good one for Democrats, but really most of them, fairly bad. Uh, but something you can look is if you look for climate change or the environment, you really have to look pretty far down. I think uh, the environment is the 28th most important issue out of 40, uh, and climate change is the 32nd most important issue out of 40, uh, just in terms of what voters care about right now. Um, so here, I'm just going to show... Uh, show some cross tabs, who are the people, how does caring about climate change or the environment vary by demographic? And you know, here I have, just for comparison, the cost of living. Right now, uh, if you ask voters what's more important, the cost of living or another issue at random, people pick cost of living 86% of the time. That's really wild, it's very hard to get 86% of people to answer anything in a survey. Uh, and this isn't a tautology. Back in early 2021, this was not true. It was like 40%. Uh, but so anyway, if you look, uh, generally speaking, uh, the climate change in the environment is really low for almost every single group, with the exception of people who identify as very liberal. For people who identify as very liberal, or in particular, 18 to 34 year olds who identify as very liberal, uh, they, it is at, this is the one segment of the electorate for whom climate change is actually roughly as important as the cost of living, though it's still below. Uh, obviously, if you like measure what percentage of the electorate are very liberal, it's like five or six percent, um, but that's just worth saying. And then you could see, though, that other than that, basically every single group, whether it's non-white voters or uh, uh, or looking by age or by gender or by anything except for ideology, most voters just don't care very much about this issue right now. So here's another graph. Uh, this is, uh, which, you know, because it kind of gets at, you know, when you go back here and you look at, you know, 18 to 34 year old Biden voters, you go, all right, well, 62%, you know, it's not a top issue, but like young Biden voters, maybe we should talk about climate in order to turn people out. And so here, here we have a graph. What this shows, is we're breaking out young Biden voters or young Democrats by their chance of voting. Uh, and so that's the x-axis. And the y-axis is how important people find the issue. And so what you could see is that, generally speaking, the young people who care about climate change are the ones who are definitely going to vote, who have a greater than 95% chance of voting. But as you go toward the middle or toward the end, suddenly people care a lot less. And then also, we have some lines here. Cost of living is number one for all groups. Uh, you know, Gaza is at the bottom. Uh, student debt is also close to the bottom. Housing is close to the top. You know, in general, uh, if you want to, if you if you decide I want to turn out young voters, and you're just trying to decide what content to put in, I feel like most people who work in politics or who do this stuff decide I'm going to start with these issues at the bottom instead of the issues at the top, and that's kind of a mistake. Uh, I think uh, is what I would say. Um, but. OK, um, so now another thing about who cares about climate. Uh, previously, I was showing you know, that it's, highly, you know, it's really concentrated with very liberal, hyper-engaged voters. Um, but another thing that shows up here what we're doing is that uh, for every single issue, I look at how much rich Democrats care about it, you know, Democrats who make more than $150,000 a year, uh, and how much poor Democrats care about it, you know, Democrats who make less than $25,000 a year. And it's rank ordered. And what you could see is that out of 40 issues, Climate change is, has, the, has the third highest tilt toward rich Democrats uh, out of any of these 40 issues that, we, that we've tested. Well, if you look on the other side, uh, you see that poor Democrats care more about unemployment, poverty, gas prices, housing, Social Security, Medicare. And you know, I feel like in our space, um, we are constantly asking ourselves, why are working class people leaving the Democratic Party? And you know, I think 
Uh, in general, it's like a hard and tricky issue, but if you want working class Democrats to not become Republicans, you should probably talk more about the issues they care about and less about the issues that rich Democrats care about. And I think if you like look at you know, what's on the top of the list over there, it, it is, it's kind of, uh, we talk about those issues quite a bit. Um, so now I'm gonna stop talking about climate, who, the climate, who cares about climate, and instead I'm gonna talk about how do we talk about climate, um, because all the people in this room care about it, and presumably we have to say something. And so the first thing, this is uh, one of the things about our shop, we test a lot of messages. Um, you know, uh, we've tested at least 160 uh, climate messages. Uh, probably the real answer is a lot more than that. And here we have a histogram uh, where of the distribution of average treatment effects. Uh, you could see that the very best climate message is named inflation, save on energy bills, which is uh, you know, kind of a theme. So first, here are the best climate messages that we've ever tested. Uh, this is a big wall of text, so I'm just gonna, you know, the number one is uh, you should vote for Democrats because they support the Inflation Reduction Act, which is gonna save thousands of dollars on their energy bills per year and create nine million good paying jobs. Uh, then there's kitchen table cost, inflation, mo uh, you know, economic strength. If you like really read into these, you'll notice that they're not really about climate. Like the word climate was kind of snuck as one of, I don't know, 80 words, but it's really mostly about energy and jobs, which makes sense. Here are some decent ones. Um, replacing lead pipes. You know, I, I keep trying to tell my other pollster friends that voters actually care about that. Um, it is important. Uh, clean water. Lowering gas prices all shows up, you know. Uh, and then I'm going to, here are some really bad ones. Uh, so the first one uh, touts how uh, the Inflation Reduction Act is going to cut climate pollution in half and reach net zero emissions by no later than uh, 2050. It also mentions uh, that we will reduce uh, greenhouse gas emissions by a gigaton. Voters didn't like that. Uh, there, was, there was one. Uh, talking about uh, how uh, big oil lied. Uh, that also doesn't do very well. And then uh, I, another one that was one of the worst was uh, talking about uh, the, Great New, the Green New Deal and frontline communities. I think it's really notable that a lot of the organizations that people here don't like very much say things that look exactly like all of these messages up here. And then the other thing we do um, is that we also test Republican attacks against Democrats on the climate issue. And something that comes through really clearly is uh, a lot of these arguments are very effective. You know, please don't tell the Republicans. Um, where, you know, just to, just to read, uh, you know, uh, some of them, uh, you know, De you know Repu uh, since day one, Biden has waged war on energy independence. His failed policies like canceling the Keystone Pipeline have led to Americans paying higher heating costs. That is a almost 90th percentile message uh, relative to all of the other attacks that Republicans do. And so it is, it's just good to know, I guess. All right, uh, I, I'm gonna end on one, I'm gonna end on one note. Uh, this is a, this, this, <laughs> yes, um, so what this is, uh, I, I do mean it. Please, please stop talking about electric cars, but I'm going to explain why. Um, so basically, this is some testing we did around the American Jobs Plan, if anybody remembers that. Uh, and so we tested, I think this is something like a dozen, uh, dozen different talking points about it. And what you could see is that at the top is you know, uh, broadband internet, trains, bridges. You know, there's some, there's an, some environmental ones that kind of do okay, uh, talking about uh, clean water and clean air and reducing the price of energy. But then the one thing that mentions electric cars and charging stations literally makes people more likely to vote for Republicans. Uh, like, uh, in, I, I say this half jokingly, but only half jokingly, like, if I had a choice between a politician touting that he helped, fun, you know, get an electric car factory built, or saying that he wants to defund the police, I might pick defund. Like, in our testing, and I think this is something that a lot of pollsters see, like, voters really, really hate electric cars, um, so please stop talking about them. Like, a, you know, it's Ford's job to sell electric cars, not ours, I guess. Um, all right, that's it. Thanks for listening to me speak.